venerable Tiger Stadium on a very warm and humid evening in Detroit. Rangers moving in for the first of three tonight as they take on the improving Detroit Tigers. Johnny O is putting together this lineup. For the Rangers, it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Otis Nixon, the center fielder, leads off. Mark McLemore will get the start at second base tonight. Will Clark is at first. Batting cleanup, the designated hitter, Juan Gonzalez. Rusty Greer is in left field. Mickey Tettleton in right field. Yvonne Rodriguez is behind the plate. Mike Pagliarulo bats eighth and plays at third. And Benji Hill bats ninth. He is the shortstop with Kevin Gross, the right-hander, looking for his second win of the year. And Sparky Anderson will put forth this defensive unit here tonight. Uh, Tigers coming in 11th in the American League with 40 airs. Bob Higginson will be in left. Chad Curtis in center. Danny Batista over in right. In the infield, Travis Fryman and Cecil Fielder on the corners. Up the middle with Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker having the night off. They'll have Chris Gomez and Juan Samuel. John Flaherty behind the plate. And Pat Ahern making his second Major League start. He got hit pretty hard in his Major League debut. Losing that ball game, just throwing one inning, giving up six hits. Two of those were home runs. Eva five earned runs, did not walk a batter, and struck out just one. And so Ahern, uh, the leading, uh, the starting pitcher in this three-game series for the Tigers, that really represent uh, some inexperience. Sean Bergman will throw tomorrow, and then Philippe Lira on uh, Wednesday. The Pat Ahern set to go to work, and here's Otis Nixon. He takes a strike. On the outside corner, we are underway in Detroit. Otis Nixon hitting 283, no home runs, 16 driven in up there from the left side, and he is a 265 hitter from the left side of the plate. Chops this one back to Ahern. Off the mound very quickly, the throw, and it was almost into Nixon as he was going down the first baseline. So Ahern gets an easy one for the first out. Well, Ahern really relies on the sinker and, and a good pitch to have if you keep it down, especially in this ballpark. And basically a sinker slider pitcher. It looks like the Tigers have the infield wet down pretty good. Yeah. Are you surprised? No. Here's Mark McLeboy. Ahern's first pitch to him on the inside corner for strike one. McLemore hitting 325. He has a couple of home runs and has driven in 23. Mack hitting 287 as a left-handed hitter. Both of his home runs and 21 of his 23 RBI have come from this side of the plate. Larry Barnett calls the breaking ball for ball one. Ahern, 25-year-old right-hander out of San Francisco, California. Went to Pepperdine College out in Southern California where he was on a World Series collegiate team at ball club in 1982 won the College World Series chopper over the mound Samuel near the bag at second and throws out McLemore. Juan Samuel takes care of his counterpart's ground ball. Two away for Will Clark. Ahern was the seventh round draft pick in June of 1992 by the Tigers and progressed pretty rapidly through the minor league system. Clark takes a strike. Will hitting a 258. That not indicative, however, of how well he has hit the ball on this road trip. One and one. Just a couple of hits in that uh, Toronto series and hit the ball hard four times, had nothing to show for it. And probably getting a little bit underneath the ball. On this road trip, he's had f 12 fly ball outs. And a lot of those we have seen uh, to left field deep. And if he continues with that stroke here in this ballpark, uh, some of those are going to go out. We saw some warning track shots in uh, Toronto and Milwaukee, but uh, those would be home runs here. Might be upper deck shots here, the way the weather is. The one-two pitch, that will even the count to Clark. Will is driven in 24, and there's Sparky Anderson. Sparky now the third winningest manager in Major League history. Outside, three balls and two strikes. 
and Johnny Oates very big admirer of Sparky Anderson Johnny uh, not at all ashamed to say that he has asked Sparky Anderson for a lot of things over the years as far as knowledge about managing the game of baseball about a couple of managers that really have a lot of respect and admiration for each other and uh, couple of guys that a couple of managers that have had teams that are similar in the sense that uh, you talk about chemistry and uh, those words or that words being thrown a lot around uh, about these two clubs. Will Clark with the two out walk aboard for Juan Gonzalez Juan hitting 255 as he steps to the plate. Strike one. Juan, three home runs. He has driven in a dozen. Hey, here, and okay is the sign. Small lead at first by Will Clark. There's the breaking ball, and that evens the count. You're talking about chemistry, Sonny. It, it seems to me that both of these managers, Johnny Oates and Sparky Anderson, really encourage the chemistry of the club to start with the veteran players in the clubhouse that uh, a lot of the things that a manager can't do as far as well, if you want to say discipline things like that are taken care of by the veteran leadership of the club fly ball to right field and Bautista there to make the catch side retired Rangers strand one on a walk after a half inning of play no score Rangers baseball is brought to you in part by Miller Lite because when we've got Miller Lite and we're in Texas life is good and by Toyota and your Texas top 10 Toyota dealers. Shadows lengthening here at Tiger Stadium out toward right, right center field. Rusty Greer leading off the Rangers second inning. And takes a Pat Ahern pitch low for ball one. Greer hitting 299, five home runs and 28 driven in. Line drive, base hit to center field. Uh, Greer got that ball out over the plate and really smoked one through the box. That's the first Ranger hit and a leadoff single. Will bring up Mickey Tettleton. We're going to pass on some special greetings from uh, Pat Ahern to some folks back in the Metroplex area. His grandparents, John and Helen uh, Ahern in Garland, and also everyone watching at the Chase Place in Richardson. So, Pat, uh, the starting pitcher tonight, is going to say hi to everybody back in Texas. Greer at first, Tettleton, former Tiger, takes a breaking ball for strike one. Mickey dropped down on the order to the number six slot tonight. Day off yesterday after really smoking his right knee with a foul ball on Saturday in, in Toronto. Another one up the middle. That's going to make its way through to center field. Greer to second, and we'll stop there as Curtis gets to the ball quickly. Oh, Mickey Tuttleton getting the uh, first swing in a baseball since Saturday. Able to lift one into center field for a base hit. A back-to-back -back single start the Rangers second. You know, possibly the off day will pay off. One of the ideas of getting Jeff Fry back was to give Tendleton the day off uh, yesterday and Tendleton uh, starting tonight's game off with a base hit. Well, the first two Rangers aboard and that will bring up Yvonne Rodriguez as Johnny Oates looks on and he saw his ball club out hit Toronto yesterday but the Blue Jays able to capitalize on their base hits and put seven on the board. Also the wildness of Ranger pitching. Yvonne Rodriguez stepping in, hitting a 297, a couple of home runs, and 19 RBI. Ahern, a check of second, and the young right hander with the breaking ball for strike one. Had his 10 game hitting streak snapped on Saturday. That began a, a new one yesterday, going two for four. 
Up the middle, Samwell can't get it by him into right center. Greer around third will score. Tettleton motors into third. And the Rangers on Ivan Rodriguez, 20th RBI of the year, take a one to nothing lead. Now, one approach to a sinker ball pitcher really is to try to take him up the middle. And something you've seen all three Ranger hitters do in this at bat. We'll take a look from behind. And a terrific job by Rodriguez inside outing a pitch on the inside corner past Juan Samuel. Take another look here. Rodriguez really using his hands well past Ahern and Samuel into right center field. And not only picking up the RBI, but uh, advancing Tendleton over to third. The three consecutive singles, the Rangers plate the first run of the ball game, and here's Mike Pagliarulo. One ball, no strikes. Pag's hitting at 243. He's still looking for his first home run, has nine RBI. Runners at the corners, nobody out. Ahern's breaking ball finds the mark. Yeah, Buzz, the Rangers might be experiencing a little bit of a Dean Palmer withdrawal. With Tendleton struggling a little bit, and, and a lot of the Rangers struggling. Uh, Rodriguez, one that has not. Rodriguez, one of three that has been swinging the bat well. But overall, the Rangers struggling, and it might be a time where uh, you, you wish you had the, the slugging uh, third baseman back. Pags has struggled a little bit. The 1 1 pitch that's inside two balls and a strike. Yeah, I think you're right. I, you know for so long now well for 50 ball games, including tonight. the so Rangers have battled either having Gonzalez out of the lineup or missing Palmer or Tettleton and Clark or Fry and, and you know eventually that's got to catch up with you for a little while. Mm -hmm. I think you start wondering what in the world else can go wrong. Chopper towards second. And Samuel can't get it out of the glove, just does get Pagliarulo at first. Mickey Tettleton comes in to score the second Ranger run. And Tettleton on his way back to the dugout, giving a little instruction to Benji Gill. So Pagliarulo with his 10th run driven in. And Samuel's inability to get the ball to second base gives the Rangers another runner in scoring position with just one out. I tell you, you're really seeing a slow Detroit infield. This grass is extremely high. You could set a, a herd of cattle out there to graze for a week to get that thing down. <laughs> but the ball, the, the, the ground is really soft and the grass high, and I think it would be very difficult to turn a double play on this infield. And probably your timing a little messed up. Yeah. First pitch to Benji Gill on the inner part of the plate for strike one. Gill hitting 269. Six home runs, 27 driven in, but this is the situation in which he has really excelled in 1995, that with a runner in scoring position. Benji for the season is at 327. Went after that pitch and fouled it off to the first base side. It's 0-2. It's also a good ballpark for Benji Gill in terms of right center field using or utilizing his his power in that direction. And he hits the ball here like he did in Toronto. And we're uh, talking about a home run. Right now down on the count is Benji. Hudge the lead from second. Breaking ball got him swinging. Ahern gets his first strikeout and that's a big one for the young right hander. They are now two gone with Otis Nixon coming up. This is a pretty good location for the fastball. I'm not sure, or the breaking ball. I'm not sure it was a uh, strike, but uh, pretty good spot. Down and away. Benji Gill kind of overmatched on that pitch. Otis Nixon 0 for 1. He tapped back to Ahern to lead the ball game off tonight. To gone and the Rangers second a couple of runs across. Rangers leading here in the early going two to nothing. A 
That's a slap foul on the third base side. No balls, one strike. Otis Nixon, four for 11 in that series in Toronto. You back over the last three weeks of play, he has been a 315 hitter. Been on a bit of an RBI drought, though. He's been stuck on 16 for a while. Fly ball left field. Coming on, Bob Higginson, and he makes the catch side retire, but the Rangers scored two times on three hits and leave one after one and a half. Do nothing, Texas. Back at Tiger Stadium, we will head to the top of the third inning. Rangers on top, two to nothing. Jeff Fry and Benji Gill talking about a little uh, play up the middle, a little middle infield work. Jeff Fry given the evening off. Mark McLemore uh, started second base. Those two will see a lot of time together, Jeff Fry and Benji Gill. Uh -huh. the second and short combination, I would think, for many years to come for the Rangers. Mark McLemore will lead things off in the Ranger third inning. Mack 0 for 1, a ground ball to second base in the first inning. And he takes the pitch inside for ball one. Here's next pitch. That's a little bit low. McLemore not completely recovered from that ligament strain in his left thumb, but uh, good enough to get back in the lineup today and as he was yesterday. Battling a two for 15 slump right now, but ahead in the count. Three balls, no strikes. Three and one. On this Ranger team, we're talking about veterans. Mark McLemore, one of the stabilizing influences. He drives one to right field. Bautista going back and in front of the 370 marker makes the catch. Now you can tell how small this ballpark play, play is from that line drive. McLemore, one of his typical line drives to right center field, and that almost had home run distance. But one gone for Will Clark. Will walked his first trip to the plate. Makes the breaking ball 1-0. Well, only a couple of hits in the Toronto series, going two for 13. He has seen his batting average drop over the last 20 ball games. Fielder overhands to Ahern, and that is out number two. You, know, you get your big guys in the middle of the lineup struggling. Uh, you really can have problems. Clark uh, over 14 games. Gonzalez now five games, and with Dean Palmer out, to, doesn't give you a lot of options. Usually, right there in the middle. We're also. Struggling as well as Talenton right behind them, but uh, hopefully this will be a series. This is normally a good hitting ballpark. People like to come and hit. And a fun batting practice ballpark. Yes, it is. Juan Gonzalez taking a breaking ball for 1-0. Oh. Juan Sky to right field to end the Ranger first inning. Texas on top, 2 to nothing in the top of the third. One and one. And probably over the years, this ballpark as well as Fenway, the two most popular park parks for baseball players to take BP in. Yeah, this, this for a left-handed hitter and Fenway for a right-handed hitter. You could lose a whole bunch of baseballs real fast. The center field, Curtis coming on. Chad there, and the Rangers gone in order after two and a half. Texas two, Detroit nothing. As we move to the fourth thing, it's time for our Southwest Airlines trivia quiz. Which former player got his 2000th career Major League hit while playing for the Rangers back in 1991? Southwest Airlines will give you that answer in a very short period of time coming up. The fourth inning will begin with Rusty Greer. And Greer, one for one tonight as he singled to start off the two-run Rangers second. Takes low for ball one. Greer had his 
four game hitting streak snapped, uh, snapped yesterday. A ball and a strike. He is still a 385 hitter in his last month of play. Two and one the count. Ahern with the next pitch. That's nubbed foul and it's two and two. And right here, let's take five seconds for station identification. This is the Texas Rangers Television Network. You're watching Texas Rangers baseball on KTVT Channel 11, Fort Worth, Dallas. Pat Ahern with a 2-2 pitch to Rusty Greer. That's it out to the shortstop, Chris Gomez. On to Cecil Fielder, one away. So Gomez handles that ball very cleanly. One away for Mickey Tettleton. Tettleton one for one against Ahern. He singled to center field and also came around to score in the second. Ball one. Johnny Oates dropping Tendleton the lineup a little bit just to take uh, some pressure off of him during the time that he has struggled. And not a bad idea. You know, there's different types of pressure through the order, and I think the, the top... Uh, the leadoff guy has a lot of pressure to get on base. He normally will have the most at bats in a season and you take the middle of the order responsible for driving in the runs the uh, third fourth fifth place guys and once you get uh, sixth and lower the pressure begins to tail off a little bit and yeah, Tendleton that sixth spot tonight. Of course most good hitting clubs in the American League uh, are pretty strong one through nine. Yeah, with the D.H. you don't have many easy slots that pitch is high it's two and two to Tettleton I think for years too the National League as I was growing up watching the Cubs uh, the eighth and, and ninth spot sometimes you'd see some a shortstop that uh, didn't hit the ball well plus the pitcher of course that wasn't true for the Cubs they, they had Ernie Banks at short for a number of years <laughs> I thought they always had the catcher hitting eighth had a catcher too he was a in that eighth spot. Tettleton just a bit under it. Shallow right center field. Bautista coming on and he puts it away. There are two gone. And Bautista able to corral Tettleton's high fly ball. Yvonne Rodriguez coming up. And we gave you the Southwest Airlines trivia quiz just moments ago. Which former player got his 2000th career major league hit? while playing for the Rangers in 91. The answer, Brian Downing did it against the Twins back on September 14th. Yvonne Rodriguez, an RBI base hit. His first trip to the plate, and he fouls the first pitch off. The Pudge now back up over the 300 mark. He's at 302, 20 runs driven in. He's hit safely now in 24 of his last 26 ball games. One and one. I'd say Brian Downing somewhere on his Harley in California. <laughs> or points east. <laughs> Line drive, base hit to left field. Gomez making a diving attempt but came up short. Yvonne Rodriguez has his second straight single. The fudge two out of two. Rangers now with. Four base hits this evening. Here's Mike Pagliarulo. Pags drove in his 10th run of the year with that ground out to second base. First pitch is low, ball one. Infield and outfield. Playing pretty much straight away, maybe bunching Pagliarulo a bit toward the gaps in the outfield. 1-0 pitch. It's fouled off on the third base side.
Pat Ahern tonight has walked one, struck out one. He has given up two runs on four hits thus far. Yvonne Rodriguez at first base, two outs in the top of the fourth inning. Rodriguez establishing his lead at first. A here into the plate. Check swing makes it two balls, one strike. This is a series you like to see Pags kind of get his stroke going uh, with three right handers for the Tigers in this series. Pags most likely to play in these ball games. This ballpark very favorable to left handed hitters. Like to see Pags kind of turn that stuff on that he did with the Yankees and the Twins. He's kind of surprised he has only hit three home runs in this ballpark over his career. Better than 100 at bats. I would have thought especially in his days with the Yankees when he came up as a full hitter that he would have worn this place out. Benji Gill waiting in the on deck circle. Three balls one strike. Hey, you're unable to get that breaking ball over and it's three and two. So with two outs, Yvonne Rodriguez will be on the move with the next Ahern pitch. Young man looking over to get the information from Cecil Fielder that he will not hold Rodriguez on the bag. Outside ball four and there are two on for Benji Gill. It was I think to be successful you've got to in this ballpark try to hit to all fields and if you're a pole hitter uh, you actually can be pitched to one way you can try to keep the ball down away from somebody and you can go and try to really go against their power maybe that's possibly what have happened what's happened to Pali Arulo here but if you're a guy that establishes the fact that you can go opposite field then you've got to move the ball around on it on a hitter. Now, that's a good point and I think a lot of you go back to what we were talking about with Fenway Park and the Red Sox of the mid 70s. He had a lot of guys that became right handed dead pull hitters and when they went on the road really struggled. Here's Benji Gill who's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And he takes ball one. Benji with runners at first and second. He's gone four for his last 12 and in 15 June games, he's been a 294 hitter. He has Rodriguez at second and Pagliarulo at first. Pretty good breaking ball from Ahern. One and one. Rudy Jaramillo really working a lot with Benji Gill. He's kind of taking him on as one of his prize projects. Johnny Oates, a lot of respect for what Aramio and Gill have done together. Another good breaking ball. It's one and two. Pat Aaron got the first two outs of the inning fairly easily, but then a single by Rodriguez, a walk to Pagliarulo. Now he's ahead on the count to Benji Gill. Breaking ball got him swinging. Side retired, two left on a hit and a walk after three and a half. Rangers two and the Tigers one. Here's a word from Southwest Airlines. Rangers baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart to fly Southwest, the low fare airline. By Dodge, see your nearest Dodge dealer today. And by All Sport Body Quencher. After this sports drink, the game will never be the same. Rangers at the top of the fifth inning have the top of the order to face Pat Ahern. Tigers now leading by two. Otis Nixon 0 for 2 thus far. He has grounded out and fly to left. Takes a strike. No balls and two strikes now to Nixon. Now Kevin Gross having a little trouble with a long ball. Gives a two run home run to Fielder and a solo shot to Higginson. Tigers take the lead away from the Rangers a ball and two strikes to Otis Nixon Woo. 
Two and two. Ayern back to the plate, and Nixon slices one down the left field line back into the seats. Tell you, Odie hasn't got on a lot with the base on ball, but he has been consistent. He hasn't gone two consecutive games in a row without a base hit this year. Decided a little too late there to pull the trigger, and he is gone, one away. Well, Sunday, June 25th, the Rangers host the Oakland A's for a 7.05 game. The first 25,000 fans, 14 and older, with a paid admission, receive a ballpark bag. And that evening is compliments of GTE. Pat Ahern with his third strikeout, one gone in the fifth inning. Here's Mark McLemore, who is over two. Breaking ball is a little bit high to McLemore. Mark now hitting at 3.21. Two hopper out to Juan Samuel. Two away. They're talking about the Rangers struggling, and in a sense, they're really kind of catching their breath. They have lost four of the last five after making a tremendous run for about three and a half weeks, and you'll see that during the course of a season. A club will put it together for a few weeks and then have a period of a week or so where they'll drop off and then again begin to pick it up. But they went from two and a half games back to a game over, and now uh, coming in today, two games back. But they had made up uh, three and a half games during that run. Lasted uh, three and a half weeks. Will Clark takes this strike. Ahern back with a breaking ball evens the count. Actually, it was kind of a shame the Rangers had to go on a, a road trip. But that's the way baseball works in the schedule wise. You know, it's, uh, they had played so well at home. And then to go on the road and win the first ball game and then things was kind of falling apart. Or not come together. Let's put it that way. Sharply hit, base hit center field. Will Clark with his first safety of the night. He is aboard with a two-out base hit, and Juan Gonzalez will come up. And Will Clark using the middle of the field, and this just his second hit on the road trip uh, up the middle. I think he's seen himself hit the ball hard to left and right, and he said, you know, that hasn't been working for me lately. I'm just going to have to try to use the middle of the field. <laughs> uh, Clark aboard. Here he is, Juan Gonzalez. He chops the first pitch foul. Juan is flying to right and flying to center tonight. Here we compare Gonzalez to Joe Carter in Toronto. That Carter really started putting up big numbers at the age of 26. Well. Cecil Fielder started at the age of 27. A year older than Carter and Gonzalez uh, at 25. But a little bit of comparison of, of three sluggers and the idea that the outfielders really start putting up big numbers usually a little bit later than, than some positions and Gonzalez uh, started that uh, in the early 20s. And if the back doesn't continue to be a problem I would think that here's a guy that's got the capabilities of being right there in the same category with Cecil Fielder and Joe Carter. Oh and two Ahern set at the belt. Line drive will hit the right field. Bautista going back and makes the catch. Rangers are gone. Clark's two out single to no avail halfway through the ball game. Detroit four Texas two. Tonight's game summary brought to you by the new Dodge. Yvonne Rodriguez two for two tonight with a couple of singles. And he has driven in a run. The Rangers, however, have left five aboard through the first five innings. And the Tigers, of their five hits this evening, three of them have not stayed in the ballpark. That is the difference in the ballgame, those three home runs. Detroit leading four to two as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Rusty Greer is one for two, and he hits the first pitch. A diving stop by Fielder on to Ahern for the out. what the big man can move side to side pretty well he's not going to burn up any base paths but he's pretty quick on that first step and two I was gonna say those first couple of steps he's not too bad a little 
Couple of small steps and a dive. Smother the ball and then the flip to Pat Ahern and nice play for the big guy to start off the sixth inning. And uh, this grass too again uh, knocking that ball down. They take uh, this ball over the last weekend in Toronto. That's a that's a double maybe a triple. Yeah. Mickey Tettleton one for two this evening. He singled and scored in the second inning flying to right in the fourth. Another breaking ball 2 and 0 oh to Tettleton. Mickey peppered the uh, roof here at Tiger Stadium and the facade of that old scoreboard numerous times in the years that he spent here. Matter of fact he hits what many people think was the longest home run here ever went over the roof and onto the roof of the lumber yard across the street. And Tettleton draws the one out walk. That's the third free pass. Issued by Pat Ahern. The one on one out Yvonne Rodriguez who is two for two tonight steps in. Joe Baver starting to loosen down the left field line. A budge with those two hits now up to 307. No balls in a strike. Hits are even at five. Tigers, however, leading four to two. One out in the top of the sixth inning. Tettleton the lead from first. Rodriguez a double play ground ball Gomez Samwell and fielder not in time. But Chris Gomez kind of taking his time getting the ball to second base. Juan Samwell couldn't get a whole lot on the throw. So Pudge able to beat it out. This double play duel not the same as the one that started the game on the bench in Trammell and Whitaker right there not quite as quick. And Samuel, a little late getting to the bag, had to come uh, from across his body. And Rodriguez able to beat it out, got down the line pretty quick. But I think uh, the tall grass that time in favor of the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Ali Arula shot up the middle into center field, a base hit. Rodriguez around second will motor on to third. And the Rangers have runners at the corners with two out. Mike Valliarulo with his first hit of the night. That is number six for Texas. And it will bring up Benji Gill again with runners in scoring position. The Benji Gill coming on, and Gill has had no luck whatsoever against Pat Ahern tonight. He came up in the second with Rodriguez at second. And was down swinging at a third strike. Came up in the fourth with Rodriguez at second and Pally Arulo at first. And again was gone on the breaking ball, swinging at the third strike. Now he's up there with two outs and runners at first and third. Strike one. I would think Benji could probably make up his mind he's going to see a couple breaking balls in this at bat. He's able to sit on a breaking ball and hit it. We saw him strike out a couple of times last Friday mm -hmm. on sliders and then come up and hit a, a double on a slider. He's just a little bit out in front. Looks like he's not seeing the ball or picking it up well off of Ahern. He just the swings he continues to make as he's out front. Ahern dropping this one down uh, about the same height just a little farther away and now you get to a spot where you can make a couple of pitches then you can use your fastball and, and show it either in or out and then try to go to that slider again and we'll see what Ahern and John Flaherty come up with the 0 2 pitch breaking ball hit off Ahern's glove into center field a base hit 
Rodriguez scores. Stopping at second is Bally Arul and Benji Gill waiting on that breaking ball. Got one in the middle of the plate and hit it right back through the box for the RBI single. His 28th run driven in. It's a 4-3 to three Detroit lead. A kind of a term you talk about going to the well too many times and probably Ahern doing that with the slider. Three sliders in a row, and especially with that 0-2 count, doesn't try to waste a fastball. And Benji Gill taking advantage of it. Rodriguez applauding him. And the Rangers with their third run. And Sparky Anderson coming out. He has made the sign to the bullpen. He wants Joe Baver to come in. The bat Ahern finished for the night after five and two-thirds innings of work. He leaves leading four to three, but two men are on in the top of the sixth. And we will take a timeout on the Texas Rangers Television Network. There's one side of you that's always logical, sensible, practical. And then there's the other side. Now satisfy both sides with a sporty Eagle Talon and get a 16-valve, two-liter engine with dual overhead cams, five-speed manual with overdrive, and dual airbags. At a price like this, it looks like Eagle Talon is just the thing to bring up the best side of you. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. In normal Illinois, Gene Goble is popular with folks who need their car fixed. He does good work, and he doesn't charge an arm and a leg. Because when he needs auto parts, Gene buys a lot of them at AutoZone. You see, the prices are low every day at AutoZone. So a lot of good mechanics like Gene just pass the savings on to their customers. Plus, they can still get the best quality parts. Sure, they know how to do the work right, but they also know how to save money doing it at AutoZone. What kind of deal is this, anyway? June is the time to get irresistible deals on every Nissan car and truck at Nissan Simply Irresistible June sales event. Buy now and get irresistible prices, irresistible deals, and irresistible choices on every single Nissan we have. Get to Nissan Simply Irresistible June sales event by June 30th, because June only happens once a year. Now save up to $2,800 on the Nissan VTP truck with air, AM, FM, cassette, chrome bumpers, and more. You know, Pat Ahern out after five and two third innings of work. Joe Baver will come in in relief. Uh, Joe led the club last year in appearances and also is leading the club and the American League with his 24th appearance. It's three and three with a 458 ERA. Fastball slider and a pretty good palm ball from Baver. First pitch to Otis Nixon he is high and away for ball one. Nixon 0 for three tonight. A ground ball, a fly ball, and a strikeout. Rangers coming back here in the top of the sixth inning and pushed across a run. They have runners at first and second with two out. At second base, Mike Baliarulo, Benji Gill after the RBI singles at first. Ball two is inside to Nixon. Otis currently hitting a 279. Trying to get back in the RBI column. Takes the strike. Otis Nixon just one RBI in his last 21 ball games, and he would like to reach Joe Baver to get off that mark. Field very shallow, swung way around to the left side. Looked like that palm ball you were talking about. Yeah, ballpark like this, Buzz, really goes against a guy like Otis Nixon. You mentioned the infield or the outfield shallow, and with the dimensions of this ballpark, you play a little shallower here, mm -hmm. and guys like Nixon are, are probably most affected by that. Favors 3 1 pitch. Got it in and over. And the count is full, so both Pagliarulo and Gill will be off with the next pitch. And if Otis Nixon is able to reach, Mark McLemore is waiting in the on-deck circle. 
Runners getting their leads. Baber. A look around. The payoff pitch. Up the middle. Over the bag at second. A diving stop by Gomez. And the throw to the plate. Not in time. Bally Arulo never hesitated. Going around third. He scores. And the Rangers have tied the ball game. Otis Nixon. Just his second RBI in his last 22 games. Gets the Rangers on the board for the tying mark. Tell you what, the Rangers have wore out the middle of the field. Uh, every hit but one has gone through the middle. And we talk about that grass being high. Take a look at this. First from overhead, the ball in the outside part of the plate. And this looked like when it first started was going to go into the outfield. But Chris Gomez able to catch up to it enough to make a play at the plate. And Mike Pallarulo with his hustle was able to score. And also a good base running job by Benji Gill not going to third. Mark McLemore now with a brand new ball game 4 4. McLemore 0 for 3 tonight. Pulls one foul that evens the count at one and one. Take another look at Chris Gomez. A terrific job by the second year player in trying to make it close at the plate. Nice slide by Mike Pallarulo going to the outside. Gomez filling in for Alan Trammell, who's gotten less playing time this year. There's a base hit to right field. Gill around third will score. Nixon motoring into third. The Rangers take a 5 to 4 lead as Mark McLemore drives in his 24th run of the year. Now the Rangers putting a three spot on the board here in the sixth inning have regained the lead. And the Rangers again using a team effort tonight. Nine base hits, nine singles. And RBIs by five different players. And uh, Rangers now getting to Joe Baver with a couple of base hits here since he's come in. Well, that closes the book on Pat Aher, and he's been charged with all five of the runs in five and two thirds innings. Will Clark takes a fastball outside, ball one. Will one for two tonight, a walk, a base hit, and a ground ball out. Well, the Rangers with three here in the sixth inning have regained the lead. And they're looking for more as Clark takes low and inside. Yeah, the Rangers without a home run the last five ball games. It's nice to see a little three piece right now with Nixon at third. And McLemore over at first. McLemore, of course, their leading base dealer. Clark a shot to center field. Curtis coming on and makes the catch. The side retired, but with two outs, the Rangers do the damage. They score three times and strand two after five and a half. It's now Texas five, Detroit four. Rangers baseball is brought to you in part by your local Coca-Cola bottler. Always a grand slam, always Coca-Cola, Texas. Dad? Yeah? There's uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. For cars that can benefit from higher octane, Texaco Clean System 3, Power Plus, and Power Premium gasolines are formulated to clean your engine's intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving. For smooth starts and sure acceleration, just give us five tanks. And you may feel like you've left your old car behind. Oh, add more life to your car. Take it to the start. What kind of deal is this, anyway? Send me irresistible. 
June is the time to get irresistible deals on every Nissan car and truck at Nissan Simply Irresistible June sales event. Buy now and get irresistible prices, irresistible deals, and irresistible choices on every single Nissan we have. Get to Nissan Simply Irresistible June sales event by June 30th, because June only happens once a year. Now save up to $2,800 on the Nissan VTP truck with air, AM, FM, cassette, chrome bumpers, and more. Well, the Rangers have regained the lead. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's now 5-4 Texas as they put a three spot on the board in the sixth. Well, the Rangers have seven hits tonight. All of them have been singles. Excuse me, nine base hits. I beg your pardon. They've still all been singles. And they all but one's been up the middle of the field right. that uh, barely made it out. Travis Fryman to start things off. He's one out of two tonight with the run scored. And Kevin Gross with new life now throws strike one. Fryman single to lead off the fourth inning. And that was followed by Cecil Fielder's mammoth shot to left center field. And Fryman takes one off the left arm. Well, he's aboard for the second time. Now Gross trying to work the inside part of the plate and left it inside too far as Roger McDowell, the right-hander, and Terry Burroughs loosen in support of Kevin Gross. You know, the Rangers are in a position with the lead that they could uh, actually bring McDowell in for a couple of innings, also use Whiteside and Russell to get there and Kevin Gross maybe not not used to pitching with a lead. He tried to get inside and hit Travis Fryman, and now the big guy up. Mm. Bus fielder inside. It's ball one. Cecil a long home run to the upper deck in left center field on a hanging breaking ball in the fourth inning. That is 16th home run of the year. He has now driven in 36. Fryman at first, nobody out. To right field, and Tettleton started back, now comes on. Mickey makes the catch, one away, and one very big out as far as the Rangers are concerned. And here comes Johnny Oates. Uh, he is going to get the left-hander, Terry Burroughs, into the ball game. Kevin Gross will depart after five and a third. He is leading in the game five to four. Runner on and one out. And we'll take another break on the Rangers Television Network. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices that make it easier for you to drive a new, sophisticated Dodge Stratus. Choose from $500 cash savings, or an interest rate as low as 1.9%, or choose a Stratus lease rate of only $199 per month. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. The choice is all yours. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Formula Shell Gasoline, you might find your car performing in ways you never thought it could. It's what you'd expect from Shell, the world's best-selling gasoline. The Infiniti i30 is truly an extraordinary luxury car. It has a revolutionary micro-finished V6 that can out-accelerate many luxury V8s. It comes with patented rear multi-link beam suspension that allows for superb handling. And it does something all $30,000 luxury cars should do. Perform. Uh, Johnny Oates making the move to the bullpen. And before the ball game, we had the Dean of American League Managers, Sparky Anderson, talk a little bit about his managerial opponent tonight, Johnny Oates. Johnny Oates is doing exactly what he did in Baltimore. He was outstanding in Baltimore, and I told the people that in Texas that this guy is going to be outstanding. I, I, 
I knew. When you know a guy and you know how talented he is and the way he goes about his business, this guy can't fail. I mean, there's no way for a Johnny Oates to ever fail because he's so talented. Pretty high praise from the third winningest manager in the history of the game. Sure was. Here's Kirk Gibson. Terry Burroughs facing him with Travis Fryman at first and Gibson. A swinging strike one. And before Oates goes to Roger McDowell in the bullpen, a couple of left-handed batters up, and uh, Terry Burrell's being called on for his 18th appearance. He already at 6.04, two and one, but just one run allowed his last six and a third innings of work. That just missed the outside corner. One ball and one strike to Gibson, who tonight has grounded to short and fly to left field. Rangers leading five to four one out in the bottom of the sixth. That one got the corner it's one and two. And Terry Burroughs establishing himself as one of the good set up left handers come in and get a couple left handers out in the uh, middle of the late stages of a ball game. And the fastball inside and missed. That evens things at 2 2. I really like that last pitch. Uh, Gibson is a guy that can dive out over the plate to try to hook a ball, and you've got to make, you got to throw that ball tied on him to set up the breaking ball away. Got him. Uh, Gibson gone on strikes. Burroughs, it's the man that, one of the men that Oates wanted him to. Exactly what uh, Terry Burroughs did. He got that fastball in then came back with this pitch probably a little higher than what he thought. Here's the supervision that uh, the Tigers have here. The ball. Starting off at 83 out of the hand and 79 miles an hour as it crossed the plate. A four inch drop. I thought that ball dropped more than that. <laughs> Four inch. That's a small <laughs> slider there. That's right. <laughs> Bob Higginson, one for two with a solo home run. Check swing foul tip. It's one and one. Pitch has to drop that much from gravity, didn't it? Well, he went from what, 83 to 79 miles an hour, and it and threw a breaking ball and only went down four inches. That may not have been a breaking ball that started at 83. Gets him on the fist and it's fouled off third base side. That may have been a cut fastball. I thought it broke too much. It could have been. Johnny Oates said he didn't care what it was as long as he got the strikeout. Got that punch out. Ryman has been at first since he was hit by a pitch to start the inning. Here's a breaking ball. That's just a little bit outside. And the count is now even at two and two to Bob Higginson. Higginson currently a 221 hitter. The home run in the fourth inning is sixth of the year. Oh my goodness. That just did miss. Three balls and two strikes. Well, with two outs now, Fryman will be on the move. If Higginson is able to keep the inning alive, John Flaherty would be next. Burroughs ready. Clark now behind the runner. Payoff pitch, a breaking ball, and he couldn't get in a bite. It's ball four. There are two aboard for Flaherty, and here comes Johnny Oates. Well, Burroughs comes in to get the strikeout and then loses Higginson on a 3-2 pitch. He will depart in favor of Roger McDowell. So the right-hander coming on, and with two on and two out, again, we'll take a timeout on the Rangers Television Network. 
there's no better place to find excitement than Jeep Adventure Days. A fun-filled savings event at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, where for a limited time, you can lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo for just $2.69 a month. Get a Jeep Cherokee Sport with over $1,300 in values, including no-charge air. Or get a great deal on the fun-loving Jeep Wrangler. But hurry, because while the adventures will go on, this event will not. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. I didn't know much about diabetes, and it scared me. I went about through about three to four years of a state of denial. I got extremely depressed to the point of just literally waiting to die. When I found out <clears throat> what it was, I was in complete denial. I just kept it a secret. I would buy me a box of chocolate-covered cherries and hide the empty box so my husband wouldn't see it. I became depressed because I really wasn't accepting it. I don't know what won't happen to me. Men do not show fear. Macho. I had to learn how to cope with diabetes for me. I need to take control. In other words, accept it. I don't think diabetes is a death sentence or ruins your life unless you allow it to. It is a disease that can be controlled. Right. I want to be alive when they, they find, find the cure. cure. Yeah. <laughs> can I have a hug? Message from the Texas Diabetes Council and the Texas Department of Health. Call for more information. <clears throat> Now, before we tell you about Roger McDowell, let's take five seconds for station identification. This is the Texas Rangers Television Network. You're watching Texas Rangers Baseball on KTVT Channel 11, Fort Worth, Dallas. And Roger McDowell making his 24th appearance of the year. That uh, ties him really with Joe Baver for most appearances in the American League. He is 2-0 with a 425 run average. And over the last... 15 games since May 2nd. He has had an ERA at 199. He is the hottest reliever in the Ranger bullpen, and he has stranded 87.5% of the inherited runners. Johnny Oates probably hoping to get a couple of innings of work and possibly get uh, all the way to Jeff Russell with McDowell's appearance tonight. But McDowell on runners at first and second, two out. John Flaherty. Who is 0 for 2 tonight will be the hitter. Flaherty has popped out and grounded to short. Fryman at second. Higginson at first. Rangers leading 5 to 4. A bit outside for ball one. Flaherty having an excellent year for the Tigers, hitting 303. McDowell okays the sign, a check of second. Hard sinker in there for a strike. One and one. I would imagine McDowell would love to pitch in this park with this grass anyway on a full-time basis. That hard sinker and slider. Chopper to the right side. McLemore knocks it down, but has no play, and the bases are full. Mack able to get a glove on it, but could not come up with it cleanly, so that'll be an infield single, and will bring up Danny Bautista. Hey, John Flaherty trying to go to that right side. Mark McLemore getting to at least saving the Rangers a run, not able to come up with the out. But, you know, we talked about the grass being high here, but also it looks as if the, the fielders are having a little bit of trouble moving side to side. Mm -hmm. The base is full of Tigers in the sixth inning. Bautista, a ground ball of third and a strikeout. First pitch to him. A strike of the knees. Bautista shaking his head. Larry Barnett will not change his call no matter how much you shake your head. You ought to keep shaking his head because it, the next one might be a little lower <laughs> and another, be another strike. He went after that one, but 
No success. It's 0-2. Prime and the runner at third base. He was hit by a pitch to start the inning. Bobby Higginson at second walked. And then John Flaherty over at first had the infield single that Mark McLemore able to knock down but not have a play on. 0 oh, 2 to Bautista. That one just missing below the knees. Bautista on this current Tiger homestand, three for 14. ball is outside the count is even now two and two oh, a very important pitch now for McDowell two ball two strike count with the bases loaded and two out. 